I'll start with Malik. Malik, just talk about what you've seen on tape from Kentucky, obviously, a team that historically and this season as well, obviously trying to run the ball. Mm -hmm. Uh, they got a really big physical line. So, I mean, our coaches already just told us, like, this is going to be the biggest challenge of the year. Um, they're going to really try to run the ball downhill, like, probably even more than Georgia did. So, I mean, this is going to be a physical game for the D-line. The game got to be one up front. You guys maybe looking forward to a game like that? I mean, it seems like teams have, teams have run the ball against mm -hmm. you guys, but it seems like you've gone against teams that are maybe happy to put the ball in there. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to stopping the run, like, really establishing my game, really establishing my game like, stopping the run. And I guess they I guess a, a really good opponent. Like they held Georgia to they played them to one point like in the game. So like it's a really good team and I don't take them lightly. Malik, what's it meant to you to come in as a true freshman and kind of be a mainstay in this defensive line rotation, especially at a position where like you don't see a lot of true freshmen come in and, and really make an impact like you have in the line? I mean, this is always the goal. Like this this is why I came in early, so I could like already get accustomed to like playing as bigger and better O line. So I mean, this was always the plan, and having my brother to help me, like have me there to guide me through it, watch film me. Like we was just, we was just talking like last night, like he was telling me about Kentucky. Like he, we watched film on him. What we did that before Georgia game. We didn't really do it much before Missouri game because he was in London and they had a game out there. But like he, he really been guiding me through it, like helping me find tendencies and stuff like that from all lines. You feel like you kind of have a. I don't know if cheat code is the right word, but I mean, not a lot of people have brothers who played in the SEC last year who yeah. have gotten through it. I mean, just do you feel like how, how big of an edge do you feel like that is? I mean, it's a really big edge, especially like like playing like playing against teams that he didn't play against last year. Like some of the like some of the same players, he'll tell me some of the terminology they use. Like if they play like nose over toes, if they put their hand down, if they blocking down on three techniques, stuff, like stuff like that, and that's stuff like that. Like really didn't help me. Like, like uh, how, how do you feel like you've grown from week one to now? I mean. I really feel like I've solidified myself like on the D line because I mean I wasn't I wasn't really like like really that confident in myself going into the season because I didn't really know how many reps I would be getting and stuff like that. But seeing like like seeing the fruits of my labor, like I worked so hard to be where I'm at and like actually getting to see it, like get sacks, like get TFLs. Like I mean, it's really been like a dream come true, true for real. Obviously, you've been able to be a contributor right away as a freshman. But what's it been like, you know, seeing all the young guys and all the other freshmen who have contributed, especially in the defense? Uh, I feel like we we probably got the best freshmen in the country. Like, I don't I don't see like no other freshman doing what we doing. Like Caleb Harris, Jay Crawford, uh, Cam Coleman, Michael Simmons. Like, we all like really playing like a big part like in in these games. Like, really like helping the team out and really contributing to the team. And just to have, like, just to have young guys knowing that we're gonna be here for years to come, like, we really gonna turn this thing around. Speaking of freshmen, how how do you think Amaris and, and TJ are coming along? Oh, they coming along well. Like, Amaris got a lot of reps last game. Like, he played really good last game. TJ TJ Lindsey, uh, he coming along a little slower because I mean, he a good player. It's just like it's just some stuff that he likes. So I mean, he like he he gonna come along too. Like. I, I, we see it at practice. Like he really does really good at practice. It's just like we just gotta see it in the game now. And when you're at Pike Road, you got moved around so much. I mean, I've seen your nose tackle in here. You play pretty much one spot. Like, I think these are three tech here. Mm -hmm. Do you like just playing one spot instead of getting shuffled around so much? Does it help you? I mean, I really get shuffled around here a lot. Okay. I mean, because like, oh, like, oh, like obvious passing downs. Like they move me and Kildrick inside. Like, we play, we play the nose position. And on like some other stuff, we play at three technique, four out of five. Mm -hmm. Like so, we play. We like, really play everything. You kind of like that, then I guess. Yeah, I like it. What you always done? Huh? Right. I don't, I'm used to it for real. Yeah. Which one do you like best? I like playing three technique for sure. Okay. Malik, it, it wasn't long ago that you were a recruit. Mm -hmm. You know, Auburn's it hadn't gone like they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Trying to hold the class together, got a good class. What do you tell those guys? What's your message to them? Like stay, like stay here, like. We go like it's it's so much better to to have something that wasn't that good and to make it good than just to jump on the bandwagon like well we gonna turn this around like we like this is a program like historically that has been good and we gonna get back to that. So I mean if y'all really with us, y'all gonna stay with us. If y'all not, then y'all not. So it's this is what it is. You talked about just the you know, especially y'all as the freshmen, you know, taking pride and turning it around. How have you guys kind of kept the team together just overall, you know, during the season where it kind of hasn't gone out? I mean, 
we all like we all none of us are soft hearted like we we're not we're not letting the results like affect how we come in and prepare every single day we're gonna come in here and prepare the same every day win or loss because coach Durkin tell us all the time a big win could be worse to you than a close loss like like it could do the same thing it could, it, it could be worse like coming in happy being compl getting complacent off that like that like it could really be worse than losing a game like and he was telling us like this past week like even if the game like even if we won the game 50 50 to 56 like that would like that would be worse than losing it whatever the score was because it would be a lot more to correct like it's, it wasn't much to correct we just had like the, the last the last drive it was just like we busted a lot it was a lot of us some of that was on me like that, the last two plays that was on me so I mean we just come in prepare the same every single week like, trying to get better every day you think that last drive from the Missouri game is going to really bother you guys it seemed like it was really bothering Jared when we talked to him about it yeah it, it bothered it bothered me too like I beat myself up about it because I had a chance to make a tackle in the backfield to play before they scored, and I didn't. I missed the tackle. And then to play where they scored, I spent out of my gap, and they hit my gap. Like uh, I put that on me. Like I told, I told D line that, that was my fault. So I'm gonna try to get better. Like that's just something that I gotta do myself. Like I gotta know. Like in critical downs, I can't, I can't do that. I was trying to make up for the play before. I was thinking like in my head. I just missed this tackle, so I got to go make one. So I was trying to do some spectacular, and I can't do that. That was a fresh mistake. I can't make that mistake no more. And my coach Ron Trill knew, like, he came up to me, talked to me after the game, because he seen that I was hurting. Like, he was like, I trust you. You're my guy, and I'll put you back out there again. Like, you just can't do that no more. And I told him, I told him I won't. So that's where, like, that, I mean, that's just what it is. That's my guy. That's probably why you're excited to play Kentucky, because it's another chance to prove right. that you're better, right? Right. Like, that, that's what I've been thinking all week. Like, I, I know it. I know they're gonna run the ball, so I'm finna get my get back. That's coming. That's coming right at you. Right. Well, is there something to be said for having a really talented freshman class with a lot of contributors in a season that doesn't work out like you wanted to? You guys are just you're getting these adversity experiences firsthand in year one. Is there something to be said for having those lessons and learning from them and, and, and just you know getting that education now as opposed to down the line when maybe you guys are upperclassmen and knowing how to handle those situations when you're older? Yeah, like we. Like we handle it, like we handle it good. Like I mean, like we we know, like we I didn't been places where I didn't lost before. Like I didn't lost games before. Like when I was at Pike Road, we started off zero two last year. Like, like I mean, I didn't lost games before, but it's just like here we on the bigger stage and we playing against like the best of the best. So it's like if this was if this was gotta come with it, like this season right here as a learning experience. So like next year. We can already know like, like what not to do, what not to do when we lose. Like, then that's what it's just gonna have to be. Like, and I tell myself every day, the only thing that's worse than being two, two and five is being two and six. Like, so or being two and ten. So I'm not trying to like keep losing. So I'm gonna come out every day and like try to get better, try to try to put a win on the schedule. You talk about the growth in your confidence. You know, Ohio's previous conference matchup. Uh, I mean, it was really that Georgia game that really like boosted my confidence for real because I get to I got to see myself like on the other side of like being you know, like people that's finna go get drafted. It's serious in front of me, like, grown men in front of me, and I'm and I held my own. Like that was that week where I got the um, highest graded freshman interior D lineman. Like that was that game. Like just to see that, it was just like it was surreal to me because. A couple of years ago, like this was a national championship team. Like some of these, like some of them players was on that team, and to put myself against national national champions at 18, I was I was like, I can't. I was I really felt like I could hold my own in this league, and that's what really gave me that confidence to keep going. Like that's why I'm not like that's why I'm not really thinking about leaving. Like I'm not like I want to be here. Like this is where I want to be. So like I don't know. It's just like just like, firing me. Hey, in games, who along your defensive line talks the most, do you think? Like, just chirping. Who's the uh, biggest jump talker? <laughs> uh, on the D-line, it's probably me, for real. Uh, <laughs> I really I really started talking this probably, like, I think it was New Mexico game. That's where I really first started. But the the person who talked the most crap on the team, I, it's it, got to be Gene, right? It's not Gene. <laughs> It's Dorian. Really? It's, I, I promise nobody would think about. I promise it's Dorian. Yeah, he's just so nice. When we talk. <laughs> right. He, 
Yeah. You know, I never think about it. I'm okay. telling you, it's Dorian. Like, he talks the most crap. <laughs> we'll be looking for him. It's hilarious. Y'all should mic him up. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all should mic Dorian up. Please mic Dorian up. Malik, like you said, you know, you're, you're committed to this team. This is where mm -hmm. you wanted to be for mm -hmm. a long time, not thinking about leaving. How do you guys, as a freshman class, sort of stick together when, when the season hasn't gone? How, how you wanted it to and not not get antsy about the outlook of the program? Because, like, like I said before, like none of us are soft hearted. Like, we, we knew it was coming into it. Like, we knew it might take a couple of years to, to get this thing right. We, we was hoping that it didn't. We was hoping that it was going to be the class. But, I mean, it's going to take it's gonna take more than us. Like, it is. We, we just going to have to stick through the storm. The storm's not going to last for long. I'm telling you all that. No, it's not going to last for long. Thank you. Thank you.